In this video, we're going to discuss fatigue testing and we're going to make some comparisons with the UTS test that we've seen previously. Now we already know that in a UTS test, the type of load that we apply is a gradual load. So what we have is the bottom end of the test piece being fixed and we're going to have a gradual increasing load being applied to the top of the test piece. So as the test progresses, the size of that force is going to increase, hence gradual loading. Now there's a couple of difference with fatigue testing, but first of all, the bottom of our test piece is still going to be fixed and we're still going to apply a force to the top of our test piece. The difference this time is that the force is going to be applied and then removed and then applied and then removed. So what we have instead is cyclic loading. as opposed to the gradual loading that we see in a UTS test. Now the ultimate tensile strength test machine can still be used for this test, but it has to be programmed to apply cyclic loading as opposed to gradual loading. So the way that this test would be conducted is the magnitude of the applied force would be specified and the magnitude of the applied force would be the same for each cycle. From that force, we could determine the amplitude of the cyclic stress, because we know that stress is force over area. So we would have a known applied stress and we would load and unload that sample until it failed. So let's say for example that the magnitude of the applied stress was 100 megapascals. And during that test we were able to do 10,000 cycles before the test piece failed. Somewhere on this axis we would have a number of cycles of 10,000. And we would end up with a data point on this plot. What we would need to do is conduct this test a sufficient number of times until we could see a trend. So we might end up with a second data point down here, we might end up with a third data point here, and so on. And over a number of different tests, we would be able to see a trend in this data. Now in the next video, we're going to take a look at one of these diagrams. They're called SN diagrams, and we'll have a look at how they're used. But in principle, once we've conducted enough tests to produce an SN diagram for a given material, we should then be able to determine how many cycles can be done at each given stress level. So if we refer to our diagram here, we could say at a stress of 50 megapascals, we should be able to determine how many cycles can be done before failure. So what we're actually able to determine from this test is the number of cycles that can be applied for a given stress or a given stress amplitude. And we'll look in a bit more detail at how these diagrams can be used in the next video.